Hello everyone and welcome to Switzerland. Today we're going to be doing a demonstration of the two payload systems that we'll be looking to integrate. We have this one here running on the X8. That is a the MAX system and that's rated for about four kilograms at the moment. We also have this guy here who is the one kilogram system and we'll be doing demonstrations of how the payload system works and how best to use it. Okay, and on with the demo. Hi guys, it's uh, Ewan again. This is a quick uh, introduction of what the payload system actually is. Essentially the payload system is what they call an EPM, Electro Permanent Magnet, and it looks like this. It's designed to change its state and hold its state with minimal power after the state has, been, state has been changed. So I can magnetize it, it will stay magnetized even if I don't apply current to it. It attaches to a simple metal plate like this and that is the principle. You have PWM inputs so you can control this from your receiver or as we'll hopefully be able to see later in the future fully automated through an ordicopter. Let's move on. Introduce you to what we're going to see today. This is our damsel in distress. She will be our, our victim for today. This is the unit we're going to be using to demonstrate the one kilogram payload system. So underneath we have one of the magnets in place. And that is rated, that in the real world that will carry around one kilogram. If you can carry one kilogram, that usually means it's about one and a half kilograms on the bench. Now this one, this is the payload of Max, and as you can see, it's designed to carry significantly more. In that case, it's designed to carry four kilograms in the air, and we're looking at around five kilograms on the bench. Now we're hoping to improve that, the in the air we're rating to near four and a half kilos, uh, we have some work to do on the design plate to do that. Now, today we're going to do demonstrations of a manual payload delivery using the system. The system is the same, the process is the same. So whether you have the max uh, four kilogram system or the one kilogram system, the process is exactly the same. We're going to be doing a semi-automated delivery as well, uh, which means Part of the route will be automated, it will be done on automatic pilot and the human will be responsible for doing the manual delivery at the end of the destination. I was hoping to be able to do a fully automated delivery today as well, but unfortunately the code that's required for that will not be released until ArduCopter 3.3. So I'll be bringing you that as soon as we have it. So on with the show, we're going to be using this system and this delivery system today, mainly because this is the one that's most applicable to our application most of the time. This is a 500 kilogram payload. Uh, it can be carried by a 450 size quad, no problem. And it has all the features of the MAX system. So it's designed to carry pretty much any weight around that, as long as it fits within the straps that you have available. Frame's designed to take straps front and rear, uh, and to the sides to keep the payload nice and secure. So, on with the show. Okay guys, this is the instructions on how you operate the system. Now, for both payload systems, the MAX or the one kilogram system, uh, you need a 5 volt input and a PWM signal. Now for the one kilogram system, the easiest way to do this is to attach it to your receiver and power it that way. The safest option is to use a BEC and a single signal wire out to your receiver. So you're still going to need one channel on your receiver at all times, but you need a nice consistent 5 volts to the unit. On this MAX system, you will need a BEC because the amp draw is quite high. So, how do you operate it? Well, you need a three position switch on your radio and one free channel as we mentioned on your receiver and this is how you work it your one button to charge 
one button is to maintain position and the other position is to release. So let's do this. Let's, let's load it up. Line the cargo up to magnets so the plates line up. Then press the switch. You'll hear it click. It will repeat clicking until you center it back to the normal position. Center it back to normal position and it will now stay in, stay in position. And that's what you will normally fly in, is that position. Now, when you get to your destination, just press the switch and it releases. Simple as that. Okay, thank you. All right guys, uh, back to the demonstration. Now, what we're looking at here is uh, the one kilogram version above the 3DR drone. Now, uh, one of the concerns that everyone asks is, doesn't the magnet interfere with the compass? Well, let's have a look just now. We are sitting in the auto pilot mode at the moment. Now, if we were seeing compass issues, we would be seeing toilet bowling, we'd be seeing wandering in yaw, we'd see a whole load of things. Now, bearing in mind this is not optimal weight for this quad, this is uh, slightly more than it should really be carrying. Now, what I'm going to do is demonstrate what actually happens when you magnetize the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to re-energize it, because the re-energizing or the change state is when it is affected the most. It generates the biggest intrusion into the magnetic field. So what I'll do is I'll just load this here. Now I'm going to try and do this without interfering with uh, the view. If I enable that. Okay, so now it is now consistently charging the magnet. So it's generating the maximum amount of magnetic field intrusion. Now, as you can see, that has had no effect whatsoever. So as long as you keep good separation between your compass and the magnet, it will fly fine. And I'll just put that back to its normal mode. And there we are. So as you can see, it will have, it will hover quite nicely. Uh, 450 size will carry a reasonable weight. This one is 500 grams uh, and will do so and can fly relatively well. Okay guys, this is the demonstration of the simplest way of doing a payload delivery. It's the full manual way of doing it. Now, it's quite simple. You basically fly the copter as you would do normally. So I will arm and we're going to take off and stabilize. This is uh, this is, after all, uh, an RD copter. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in loiter. Now, how you fly to your destination is entirely up to you. But what I would suggest is uh, something like a loiter program when you get above the target, because you need the fine resolution to be able to land the package as closely as you can to your victim. So I will fly this over. Now, the trick to here is using the camera. Good, see? The trick here is to use the camera when you get above the target. Now, the down facing camera is really good for getting stuff really close and accurate. So. I'm pretty happy that I am right on top of the victim. So what I'll do now is I will just release. And that's it. Payload delivered. So return to base and that's you. Alright guys, this is the next demonstration. This is a semi-automated flight. Now, why is this semi-automated? Well, because some 
some countries uh, have specific legislation about what you can and cannot do with autonomous flights. Now, this uh, semi-autonomous one works for both um, DJI, NASA's and for APM's. Um, as you'll find out why. And essentially what this does is it lets you complete the auto mission uh, to the specific location of where the victim is, but you still have to do the manual drop. Now that gets around some legal issues in some countries, as I mentioned, but also uh, it helps make sure that you can do the drop safely, uh, make sure there's no hazards on site and, and these types of things. And it. Uh, it's, it's quite a useful little feature and it doesn't exclude any NASA users as well, which is always quite good. Okay, so um, there are basically two parts to this mission. Now, the first part of this mission is you have to identify the waypoints. So uh, the, the copter can only fly to a specific location that it knows about. So let's, uh, let's give it one. Now what I'm going to do is, is I am going to put this to a decent altitude first, so we can actually see what we're doing. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to switch to the FPV camera, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up on the target itself that I know about. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the loiter in, in APM here, just because it gives me a bit of accuracy. Now. I, I can f uh, fly to the approximate location of where, where the victim is. That's where we're at. Now what I can now do is I can now set a specific GPS position for this. So while we're above the, the victim, let's uh, give ourselves a little bit of altitude just to be safe. So we can make sure we're in the right area. Now, Now, I think that's close enough for the purposes of this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a feature with an APM called Save Waypoint. So I click that button, that has now saved that waypoint. What I do now is I simply return to home, pick up my payload and fly back to that saved location. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so we are back at the desk and what we're going to do now is download the save waypoint that we recorded when we flew out to the victim the first time. So, quite simple with an, uh, well, I'm using the APM system just now, but you can use a similar one here. And what I can do is I can read the waypoints. So what we have here now is we've got a list of all the waypoints that were recently added. So fortunately I still have some waypoints left from the last mission we did uh, with the Gotthard. But let's, uh, let's clear that down a little. So, uh, So,
What we have now is we have the basics of a waypoint system. Just added one accidentally there. So. As you can see, we have now got the waypoint programmed. And now it's a really simple matter of setting up your extra waypoints. So take off, we can set the altitude to 10 meters, we set that to 3, and there we are. Now, we write the waypoints to the craft, and that's it. Now I haven't specified a land one because I just want to take control of it once we've uh, delivered the payload. But essentially what this will now do is that will now take off, it will fly to the victim's location and it will sit and wait for me to do the drop. So let's get that set up and show you how that runs. Okay guys, so this is us starting the semi-automated route. We have written the waypoints to, to the drone, uh, set to take off and fly to the first waypoint. And so when we get there we will do what we need to do. So, we have got the normal arming sequence for an ardicopter. We engage auto. So, that's auto away. Okay, now we're still on automatic here and what we simply do is we disengage the payload. That's it there, that's it done and that's us, the mission is complete. So we'll just fly it back. And that's it. So, as we did before there, you engage, auto, you fly it, let the mission complete, and you disengage the payload using the button. Simple as that. So, that's us. Now the next one is obviously the fully automated one, but we can't do that until we have got our Ducopter 3.3. Um, but I think this is enough for us to go on just now. So uh, I'll move on to the next part of the demo. All right, guys. This is the this is a demonstration of payloader Max. Now this is exactly the same as existing payload system. It just has more capacity. Now this is currently carrying. 3 kilograms. Uh, I will draw your attention to the bottom right prop. I have actually disengaged that prop. So we are actually flying on seven props at this moment in time. Now what we can do is it works exactly the same as the other payload system. So we can fly up to the target. Look at that. So we can fly up to the target as normal. There we are. And 
just as before you can we'll just drop that down a little because we're carrying fluids this is coming at currently three kilograms of water right next to the victim and we can drop and there you go it will now sit there quite happily until I return to base so let's do that And there's that front right. 